You've probably heard of James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. The book's famous tagline reports that remarkable results can occur simply from tiny changes. In fact, to become 38 times better at something, all you need to do is to get 1% better every day for one year. Sounds amazing, right? Can you imagine being 38 times better at something than you are now? And it doesn't even require any heavy lifting? Who wouldn't sign up? Unfortunately, like most things in life, if something sounds too good to be true, it usually is. As much fanfare and praise this book has generated, this 1% better premise is pretty misleading. How realistic is getting 38 times better? It's hard to conceptualize something like this with skills or life stuff, so we'll use something more tangible like money. If you have $1, getting 100% return on the dollar means you'll end up with $2. You now have two times the money you used to have. Getting a 3,700% return on $1 means you'll end up with $38. You are 38 times more rich, which is 38 times better than just having a single dollar. Okay, now that we know 38 times better is equivalent to getting a 3,700% return, what does this actually look like? in real life. Let's say you had put aside even just $100 in this fabled investment vehicle, getting a 3,700% return. In just three years, that 100 would have now grown to almost $5.5 million. What kind of investment regularly achieves these kinds of returns over and over again? Crypto? NFTs? No basically nothing. No person, company, or God can reliably transform $100 into $5.5 million in just three years. According to Nasdaq.com, even Warren Buffett, the world's greatest investor with a net worth of $112.3 billion, could only generate an average annual return of 19.8% over his entire career with Berkshire Hathaway. And so, when Atomic Habits tells you that by implementing a few simple habits every day, like reading for 10 minutes at night, putting your pills next to the faucet on the bathroom counter, or doing 10 push-ups before lunch, and implies that this is going to give you a 3700% return on your life, something feels a bit fishy, no? As much as I would love that to be the case, as I actually do implement and encourage a lot of what Atomic Habits has to say, I know, realistically, there's no way I'm going to get anywhere close to that kind of return on my time. Doesn't mean you don't do it, just don't get discouraged when that magic life-transforming thing doesn't happen as soon as you would like. The real problem with 38 times better in just one year isn't the grandiose claim itself, because the math does pencil out. If you do get 1% better a day, you will undoubtedly become 38 times better in one year. The main problem lies in the fact that it is almost impossible to get 1% better a day every day for an entire year. On the surface, 1% sounds easy, it's just 1% but it only sounds easy because we don't understand what 1% better really means. Let's say you're a medical student. What does 1% better mean as a doctor in training? Doctor in training Smith implements an amazing atomic habit where he wakes up at five in the morning, takes a cold shower and learns an entirely new disease like the back of his hand. Pathophys, clinical manifestations, management, prognosis. It's a lot of stuff to learn. Is he now 1% better than yesterday? Sounds like it, right? but let's actually see. Day one, he goes from zero to one disease learned. An infinite return, holy smokes. But on day two, he goes from knowing one disease to two diseases. Tally ho, good man. That's 100% return. Atomic Habits only needs you to do 1% a day, you slick overachieving son of a gun. Day three now, two to three, 50% return. Okay, not bad, but I'm not sure I like where this is going. On day 101, when he goes from 100 diseases to 101, he's finally at the 1% return a day needed, but on day 1001, he drops now to 0.1%. What the heck happened? Dude's returns are diminishing over time like crazy. Eventually, he'll plateau and hit a steady state where 1% better is literally going to be impossible. This is the concept of incremental improvement, an additive change that actually decreases return over time. It is by definition linear in nature, and it will never give you the compound return or exponential growth you're looking for. As sad as this is, this is actually how most people operate. They think they are doing something amazing when it's actually not giving them the results they want. And this is despite a Herculean effort. I mean, think about it. Dr. Smith is waking up at 5 in the freaking morning and spending every single day studying. It's a recipe for burnout. I know, because I was Dr. Smith. 
It took me a while to realize that pure blind hard work doesn't cut it. Deep down, 1% better is really about working smarter, not harder. It's about finding new study techniques that increase your capacity to learn more than just one disease a day. It's about going beyond lecture videos and seeing diseases in real life with real patients to add color and depth to everything you learn. It's learning to be less of an asshole so every patient henceforth benefits from your improved bedside manner. These are all systemic changes that completely transform the way you do things. You want to upgrade your factory to the latest advanced technology, not just maintain it or keep the lights on. Most people don't think this way because systemic upgrades are hard, even at the 1% level. Think about your own life and your own goals. Have you honestly changed anything in your life from a system standpoint? Yes, midlife crises and drug-induced epiphanies do count. Point is, upgrading your systems requires resources and outside the box thinking, and eventually becomes pretty much impossible in the long run. That's why corporations, even with billion dollar budgets, whose very mission is to grow or die, cannot even sustain 1% growth a day. So, what can you do instead? Rule number one, do the easy things first. Instead of 1% better a day for a year in just one arena, push for 1% better in as many different but related arenas as possible. This is probably what Atomic Habits was indirectly advocating for anyway, but rule one makes it explicit. This is the lowest hanging fruit principle. As you saw with the Dr. Smith example, the biggest returns came in the beginning before the law of diminishing returns kicked in. Collect as many of the low hanging fruit as possible first to not only supercharge your life, but to build momentum and get used to the idea of systemic change. In the time management department, that's having a consistent bedtime routine so you can wake up early. Once set, any further optimization isn't going to give you as much return, so move on to something else. In the health department, that's maybe only eating vegetables for breakfast. In the social department, that's saying hi to one stranger a day. In the brain department, that's deleting TikTok and subscribing to this channel instead. If this all seems overwhelming, you're right. It is because one systemic level life improvements every single day is in general a hard thing to do. Hence why the rest of the book is dedicated to the formation of habits. And two, you have to sustain and remember to implement each daily improvement for an entire year, if not the rest of your life. By the end of year one, that's 365 new systems altering habits you're now juggling. Sounds insane, right? That's why we have rule number two, just breathe. Get rid of the pressure of needing to be 1% better every single freaking day. Take your time. You're implementing systemic changes. These take time to get used to. You can't rush the process. You want to sustain this for the long run, not crash and burn. According to psychology research, depending on the complexity of the behavior, habits can sometimes take more than 10 weeks to become automatic. Let your brain grow the connections to actually sustain the change you want. Recently, I found the perfect app to do just this. It's today's sponsor, Xtiles, a platform that allows you to build your very own custom-made personal digital dashboard. It's a visual-based workspace you can use to organize literally anything, from to-dos, to notes, to diagrams, to even integrated Google calendars. It's incredibly sleek, easy to use, and dare I say, sexy? To save time, you can choose from a vast array of different templates for the type of work you want to do. You can collaborate with your friends and even use the phone app for seamless on-the-go integration. Signing up is easy. All you have to do is go to xtiles.app, create a free account, and get started. I found it perfect for planning my year, both from an overall life goal standpoint, to reflecting on my year as a whole to mapping out major moves for each month, to fine tuning each week, to arguably the crown jewel of the entire shebang, my own custom made life dashboard. I like to think of myself as a pilot and x as my highly tuned, technologically advanced flight panel of important instruments. I got my lo-fi music playlist in the top left corner, my life meter in the center. Oh, oh boy, I've already lived 44% of my life. Wow, okay, I'm just, just gonna ignore that for now to the main workhorse below, my lifetime habit counters, weekly habit tracker, Pomodoro and flow state trackers, and a litany of things that help me supercharge each and every day. This is literally all I need to be insanely productive. If you don't have a system like this, what are you waiting for? Go to Xtiles and make one today. See how amazing it can be for you. 
link in the description. Rule number three, experiment. James Altucher talks about the concept of 10,000 experiments in his book, Skip the Line, as a direct response to the concept of 10,000 hours popularized by Malcolm Gladwell in his book, Outliers. Gladwell claims that greatness and mastery requires enormous time, dedicated practice and consistency. Sure, hard to argue against that, but how you get there also matters a lot too. If your goal is to dig a giant mountain-sized hole, are you just going to blindly get to work digging with your bare hands? Or are you going to figure out a way to make a shovel? In many of life's goals, what that proverbial shovel looks like is not obvious. To find it, you have to be willing to try new things. To experiment. Have you heard of the Fosbury flop? Back in the day, all high jumpers employed the straddle method. Dick Fosbury, a lanky guy with no natural jumping talent, had a lot of difficulty with the technique. He couldn't even make it into his own local athletics club. Undeterred, he began experimenting with his own back first method. Guess what? Not only did he make it to the Olympics in 1968, he took home gold and literally transformed the entire sport overnight. Nowadays, there's not a single Olympic athlete who doesn't train with Fosbury's signature move. Forget 10,000 hours. Even if Fosbury had dedicated 10 million hours of training with the original straddle method, it wouldn't have made a difference. Erase all conventional wisdom, biases, and preconceived notions. Start from square zero and experiment. What are other people doing? Let's try it. What are other people not doing? Let's try it. Collect data and see what works better for you. Rule number four, focus your efforts and wait. Fosbury wasn't just randomly experimenting in his backyard on a whim one day and just so happened to throw himself over the pole headfirst. No, his gold medal technique was a dedicated effort of constant iterative refinement and evolution over five years of time. If you map out his growth over time, I'm sure it's not a nice gradual increase of 1% better a day. It probably looks more like this, a jagged up and down with more setbacks than you can count. But because he kept on going, along with those setbacks probably came giant spurts of growth as well. Reality of life is that growth is never going to look pretty, and it's probably going to feel even shittier when you're in it, but that's the beauty of it. If you zoom into those jagged lines, in those valleys will be thousands of people who have lost the will to continue. To be honest, I actually welcome the era of TikTok and instantaneous gratification, because it just means less and less people are going to be willing to subjugate themselves to the harsh realities of jagged growth. As the world becomes more and more competitive, I'm reminded time and time again that the best superpower that you could ask for is really just dogged persistence. Without it, I could scream about this productivity trick and that mindset shift until I'm blue in the face. Fact of the matter is, none of it really matters if you don't even show up to play. At any rate, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you want more ideas just like this delivered to your inbox, then please join my Substack to get early access. If you want to join a welcoming community of like-minded people looking to help one another out in the pursuit of bigger endeavors, consider joining the community I will be building. I'm debating between school and Discord. Let me know if you have a preference. If you want to support this channel and its efforts to grow, become a Patreon member and get your very own Doodle character to be featured in all videos. And of course, if you haven't already, please subscribe and then go tell your friends, your grandma, and your pet hamster. Smell you later.